I just want to preface a little bit uh, my presentation is um, we've been working a lot over the years with children who uh, are at risk. And one group that has been overlooked in terms of interventions that are effective have been English language learners. And so um, we have done a synthesis of the literature uh, quite a bit in terms of the quantitative literature. And uh, it seems wanting a little bit in terms of uh, um, creating changes in behavior for children who have, in this case, Spanish as a first language. And so um, from years of research, I uh, felt it was important to write a grant, a federal grant, uh, to uh, first of all, investigate what is going on in terms of the developing of kids in the area of math specifically. And actually, uh, word problems, um, math word problems specifically, and I'll explain why I think that's important in a little bit. So what I'm going to show you is really not an intervention study. It's kind of the beginning before an intervention study, even though we've done a number of uh, intervention studies with monolingual children in the past. So um, I have a lot of people connected with the project. The National Science Foundation has been very kind to us in terms of funding. Um, the we've uh, in this project uh, we've I think I've had about 25 people hired. I've supported uh, in this project at least um, or I believe four doctoral students, uh, um, and I've also supported three postdoctoral students, and we've supported a number of uh, master's degree students and undergraduate students. So I've been able to use this project to help researchers, developing researchers, as well as support people to finish their their program. I might want to say, which makes these people unique is they're all bilingual. And what makes our project very unique is that, that we uh, look at children's first language and second language and the role that it plays in uh, math performance. Um, at a national level, um, there's been a lot of research uh, on um, the fact that some kids are having difficulty in math. And it seems like English language learners are particularly are, are singled out and it, uh, uh, this has been something that's been going on for uh, about three decades. And so usually the way it's investigated is they'll kind of look at vocabulary or they'll look at reading and its role it has in math, but nobody's really done a thorough study of all the different sorts of variables, at least in the cognitive area, that could play a role. Um, the problem is that uh, we don't know, uh, when they look at uh, longitudinal studies, we don't know uh, how the children are doing in their first language and what role that plays. And so we were trying to develop a longitudinal study that looked at both first L1 and L2 uh, development. Um, the fact is there's not a whole lot of measures out there uh, to test children in Spanish, say, for example, that have any uh, sort of psychometric criteria that you could use. So we've had to develop a lot of our measures and establish the psychometric criteria. And very few right, really follow children for a long time to see where they, in fact, are learning to compensate and the ones that do quite well hasn't been documented, as well as uh, some of the reasons that children uh, sort of maintain math difficulties over the a period of time. So, um, why would I focus on math word problems? Well, number one, I was terrible at that. <laughs> number two, uh, uh, most of the math you find in every day is in a language context. And so um, whether you're checking out a grocery store when they ask you if you want to buy this at a certain amount, all of it's sort of a language interchange of information. So it isn't so much just give me two numbers and I'll manipulate them to get the answer. It's usually in a verbal context. And the fact is that uh, word problems are kind of nice because they tie comprehension, problem solving, and the vocabulary as well as your calculation ability overall. Also, in a technological society, we note that um, math is very critical for future employment. So it's a, it's a worth area to, fo to focus in on. So how are we looking at math development here? And I, as mentioned, I'm only in, we're in our third year, or moving into our fourth year. We observe what's going on in the classroom, and we've had some great teachers observe what they're doing for instruction with these kids. We follow kids for three years uh, over, and we give them a battery of tests that we've developed and some that are already commercially developed. 
Uh, and we also uh, are trying to develop some uh, valuable instruments that are reliable and help us predict kids who are going to have difficulty later on. Right now, we have 429 kids that started the project. And as you'd anticipate, in the longitudinal research, we lost a few. We've lost over 100 kids by the time we get to third year. So a lot of them have just moved out of the school district or dropped out somewhere, and we can't find where they went. So it's a very difficult uh, piece of work. But what we do is in the very first year, um, we test children in, in grades one, two, and three, and then we follow them for three years. So it's kind of a, uh, uh, when you don't have a lot of money, it's the best way to do longitudinal research because you can't follow the kids for five years altogether. So you do what's called a cohort sequential design. Uh, some of the measures we give, obviously you can see just in the list here, they're just beyond just math measures. It isn't just math that plays a role here. It has a lot to do with vocabulary, has a lot to do with sort of domain specific skills like being able to uh, judge very quickly, large numbers, small numbers, make estimations of where things would fit on a grid. Uh, it has a lot to do with reading comprehension. It also has a lot to do with vocabulary, a lot of vocabulary in math, but it also has fluency. Uh, and we look at memory processes. We also look at the ability to inhibit their L1 to do L2 and L2 to do L1 kinds of activities. So there's just a lot of measures we've uh, been using in our project. Um, we also do, as I mentioned, classroom observations. Now we're more focused on the kids and how they're developing, but it, we want to be able to tie it into uh, some of the activities that are taking place in the classroom. So we observe teaching going on of math in uh, fall, winter, and spring. And obviously we had difficulty this year after March getting our third year of data uh, observation. We also asked teachers what they think are the most important things to focus in on in terms of the instruction uh, with, the, with this group. So we're putting all this information together. Um, so what do we provide the schools? I mean, uh, we're, we're addressing problems that, have, uh, that are at a national level. In fact, we're probably one of the largest study longitudinally in terms of the measures that we're using and the, the uh, depth in which we're looking at information. But we, uh, we do provide the schools with what we come up with information. Uh, we, we provide yearly reports to them. We'll do in-services for them and what we're finding and so forth. Um, we also, teachers to give us information, it takes time. We also provide financial compensation for the teachers that are participating with us. And, so far, we just had a, a very good relationship with that. And at the request, we do present to the school boards, and we've done that um, in one of, by the way, I might mention that our, our data is being collected in both California and uh, New Mexico. And so at the request, we've gone to school board meetings, and we provided reports to principals. So the schools are getting something out of all of this information. And of course, the thing that they always ask is, what does this tell us about instruction? And I'll try to get to that later. I wanted you to remember this is not an intervention study, however. Um, so what's in it for kids? <clears throat> well, we're trying to identify the kids who become um, good in math. What are they thinking and how do they think? And uh, what sorts of things do they bring to mind when they're thinking and the kids are having difficulty? And we want to identify those things that are susceptible to instruction. We also want to look at cross language factors um, in terms of what facilitates math cognition. Uh, is it, you know, are they having difficulty inhibiting some kids, inhibiting their first language as they do a second language task, and so forth. Um, we also want to see where the breakdown occurs. You know, uh, things go along pretty good for first and second grade. When you get to third grade, you get that uh, third grade hump where all of a sudden difficulties occur. We don't know if that's related to the measures that are in the field or uh, some other sorts of factors. So, um, uh, also, we provide parents uh, uh, information on how their child is doing. So they get very specific information about, you know, in the area of reading and math and how they're progressing. So the parents have access to the information we have. Ours is far more comprehensive than any school can provide in terms of information. This is what it looks like so far in our data as we go across first, second, third grade. When you get up to fifth grade, you're 10 years old. So you can see here, it's a nice linear development. And isn't that nice? But when you look at kids uh, in terms of the performance uh, who have difficulty and ones that don't have difficulty, you can see in this graph, the lower part that that gap still 
is there. And it's not getting better overall in terms of problem solving. We look at both English and Spanish. And so in Spanish word problem solving, you can still see the ones at the lower end here. Uh, that, that gap sort of remains across the uh, development time period. So we've got to do something about that. So what do we know so far? Well, we're not done. We've got a lot of work to do. Um, the obvious things is we can predict from year one to year three how they're gonna do in problem solving. And as you, as teachers, you would know this, vocabulary is very important, both in English and Spanish. Uh, reading in English and Spanish are both important. And calculation in terms of how it's been, we already know that's pretty obvious. The fact is there's just a lot of interactions with this. It isn't as easy to say high in Spanish, high in English is gonna take care of it. There's interactions going on. The not so obvious is there's some cognitive areas that are uh, critical that actually predict from year one to year three that we're sort of looking at. Um, now you can predict how the kids do at a certain level to how they do in one year and three years down the road. You have a certain level, but those aren't necessarily the things that grow. And so we're trying to look at the things that grow along with their math problem solving. And so we're looking at within child changes also. And their ability to make estimations, uh, like when you see a line from zero to 100 and it's 10 inches long, and you ask them where the number 33 goes, they can kind of roughly estimate where that number would be in this uh, line. So estimation is important. Um, we also looked at instruction. Uh, we, as we said, we've done a lot of observation in the classroom. We've been very fortunate. Teachers have been wonderful in terms of cooperation with us. Um, there are different things we have about, uh, and that's another thing in the math area, uh, coming up with a valid, reliable observation tool uh, that people can use who aren't necessarily proficient in math themselves or who can see and observe is a difficult task. So we've had to develop that task. Um, and we have about 25 things we look at overall. And we do it in what's called a time sampling approach. And um, to predict English problem solving. So you, from year one to predict year two, we've looked at the correlations. And these are some of the things we've found when you wanna look at English uh, word problems. Um, the teacher provides different ways of approaching the problem. The teacher translates key, uh, key words that helps in solving the problem. Uh, there's actually a practice. Now these are just obvious things that you would sort of see, see but the frequency in which these are done play a lot in terms of the correlation that you get uh, three years down the road. In terms of uh, Spanish problem solving, um, uh, you know, providing vocabulary to the terms, uh, how quickly they can do the, the arithmetic, getting fluent in it, um, certain memory instruction, providing corrective feedback. So we're getting different things that predict uh, different parts within the language systems. Uh, well, uh, we have a lot of work to do still, and we're gathering information. So you can see some of the things we have to do. We have to link what we're observing to the actual development of the child. We have to look at the cross language factors. We, I'm a cognitive psychologist, so I'm interested in the cognitive development and how should, kids are thinking uh, about uh, when they do word problems. And um, you can see sort of the rest there. The practical implications, I think, of our study uh, when we're done, we want to be of service to this group of kids and to the school setting. Uh, we'd like to get a very accurate, uh, stable uh, tools that can be used in the public school situation. Uh, we want to document uh, what does grow along with problem solving. And this is just math, other things that are taking place and we can tie it into uh, instruction.